Okay, so today we're going to continue with the case study. So I gave you some page which is helping to organize your ideas for the case studies. The last time we brought on the board four things that we are going to do, which is number one, the problem. Number two, information. Number three, analysis. Number four, is action plan. So you can either, does everybody have a page? So here we can see the problem. So you can use this page if you want, or you don't have to use this page. You can use the page you had from the last class, right? So number one is problem. Then we have data, qualitative data and quantitative data we talked about before, okay? That's information. Then we have analysis, and then we have, at the end, the action plan, here. So while we're going through the case, you can get some notes. So you give me the page at the end with your name and ID number. It can be this page or your own page, okay? It goes towards your participation in class. So, what were the questions we discussed in the last class? Can you remember? So, who wrote down in the last class the problem? What was the problem in this case? Um, yes, what was the problem? Why the US have countries large deficit? Why does the US have a large current account deficit? Right, another one? Oh, why is the last deficit not the problem? Is the large deficit a problem or is it okay? And the last one? What should they do if they think it's not okay? Right, if, it's, if we want to improve it or if we want to make a balance, then what do we need to do to make a balance? Okay, so those are the things we're focusing on as we're going through the information. If the information is not relevant, to help us to answer those questions, do we need to write down the information if it's not relevant to those questions? No, right? We just write down the information which is relevant to those, help us to answer those questions or problems from the case. So the last time we discussed about the 2000s, the dot-com bubble and the other results of that. So then we move on today with a benign resolution, which is people who are saying that it's okay, right? And there's no problem with the deficit. Okay? So helping us to answer the question, is the deficit okay? So we, we can write here, we're under benign resolution, but we can write here deficit okay, or on the other side, we can have the deficit is not okay. Okay? So here we have benign resolution. So who read the benign resolution part? Who read this part? Move your hand if you read this part on page 8. 1, 2, 3. Okay. So we're looking at this question, and we're also going to look at another question, which is, what should be done? And then we have US and the rest of the world. Okay, so what's the main point here in this one, a benign resolution? Page 8. So hands up again, who read page 8? Who read page 8? 1, 2, 3, right? So can you tell me then what is the main point? <coughs> Can you tell me? What did you write down?
I'm sorry, can you raise your voice a little bit more? say here instead of finance? Hmm? Invest. Invest or pay for. Right? So if they don't, the rest of the world don't give loans to the US or invest in the US, there's a cost. What is the cost? What's the cost for the rest of the world if they don't lend money to the US? American economy. The American economy will fall down. What, yeah. what would happen to the rest of the world? No What's the cost for the rest of the world if the U.S. economy suffers? No market for their goods. There's no market for their goods, right? <laughs> A little bit of an exaggeration. No market, right? But less market, or much less market. We saw the U.S. is buying is about half buying about half of, <coughs> or has about half of the world's current account deficit, so less market for exports. Okay, so this is helping to keep the deficit. Okay, what else? So, is the Asian Central Banks going to continue purchasing or not? Which countries are we talking about? China, China Korea. Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, right? Continue purchasing or buying is the easier word, right? We can call treasuries. We know we're talking about the US government bond, okay? Long to write US government bond. So Asian central banks continue buying deficits or buying uh, treasuries, right? Anything else? We have, this is an opinion here, that many observers, right? So some ex observers believe this, right? Or experts. This is an expert's opinion, right? Qualitative information. Some experts think Asian central banks will continue buying treasuries, okay? So anything else here? Did you read this part? No. No? Okay. <laughs> anyway, you can tell us. I think hmm? that this current account deficit is desirable to our global economy because it keeps exporting and, and importing very well. So, so this one. Uh, yeah. right. We need to keep it for the market for exports. Okay, do you have anything to add? Do you guys have anything to add in this part? Important part? OK, 
Okay, there's one thing here, which is globalization of financial markets. So, this means that people can invest wherever they want to invest their money these days. So more and more people are investing in other countries. Okay? Do investors like the US? Yes. Yeah. As a destination? So if you think that the financial market is more globalized, people can invest in whatever country they want, do you think the US can get an advantage or disadvantage? Yes. <coughs> more money going to the US or less money? More money. More money. Okay? So, a lot of global savings go into the US. Why? So we have saving, global savings invested in US. Why do they invest in the US? It says here three reasons. Number one, they have a favorable investment climate. Okay? So it just means there are good investment opportunities, right? Do you understand climate? Climate is like weather. Right? So the US has a nice investment climate. We can have a strong investor protection. Do you understand the investor protection? It means that if I invest in another country, I'm not sure that I can get my money back. What if there's some fraud? Just pick any country at random. I invest in Thailand. And there's some fraud in Thailand. Do you understand fraud? The company is not a real company. It was just some person who was pretending to be a company. And I bought stock in their company. But it was a fraud company. Can I get my money back or not? No. Depends on the rule of law and the protection for the investors. Okay? So in the US, they have the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. They're, they have a very good way of checking all the companies, making sure they're being run properly. If there's any fraud situation, making sure investors get their money back. Okay? So that's another reason. And they have a high return. If I invest, if I look at the S&P 500, gives a good return over the long term. Okay? The US stock market gives a high return. So people like to invest there. But because of the globalization of financial markets, more money can go to the US, which can keep the deficit situation. Okay? Uh, so then let's move on to the next part. A change in trajectory. So who, what does trajectory mean? Trajectory is the direction of the ball when you're playing sports. So change in direction. So who was reading change in trajectory? Okay, so what can you guys tell me? What's the important part here relevant to our questions? Why not? investment by US people compared to the investment of foreigners in the US, right? Why could that be unsustainable? Could it become unsustainable? Why? So the 
U.S. has a high external financial obligations. So, what does it mean, financial obligation? What does that mean? I have an obligation, financial obligation. I need to pay back the money, okay? So it makes sense. If people are investing a lot of money in the U.S., giving loans, what do the U.S. people need to do? They need to pay the interest. That's a financial obligation, okay? Or if I invest in the company, the foreigner owns part of the company, the stock, right? So I need to give, pay them the profits, dividends from the company. So the financial obligations, uh, you know, if they, this gets worse, uh, the U.S. need to pay more money pay a lot of money in interest and dividends and so on. That could be too much or unsustainable. Okay. So any other, anything else here? Talk about the NIP, NIIP. If the U.S. suddenly, if, they, if because of this they suddenly depreciate, then they could stop the capital flows, right? Or stop investment in the U.S. So if we depreciate the dollar, then people wouldn't wouldn't be so happy, investors, right? So they might stop sending their money to the US. Anything else? <coughs> so as some country to remove dependence of US dollars, so they try to uh, they try to balance their currency uh, between their currency and US dollars. So they turn to change What is the quote there from the South Korean? Yeah. Yoon Jung Hu Hyun, what did he say? What did there is one Yoon Jung Hyun say? There is widespread recognition that the on ongoing trade imbalance between Asia and United cannot be sustained and could potentially cause a systemic risk to the global financial system. Okay, and what did Abe say? Oh, sorry, the Japanese Prime Minister at the time, or China's Prime Minister say? We are a little bit worried. So the Chinese are a little bit worried, and the Japanese? They want to diversify their currency holdings. Do you understand yeah. diversify? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So buy some different currencies, yes. not just the U.S. They weren't happy in 2008 and 2009 because the yeah. U.S. was doing QE, printing a lot of dollars, yeah. right? So Barack Obama tried to keep them happy. He said there's no safer investment in the world than the USA. Do you trust Barack Obama? He says there's no safer investment in the world than in the USA. Hmm? Do you agree with him? Is there another place in the world you can make a safer investment? Yeah. Where? Shandong. <laughs> Change your mind very quickly. <laughs> so maybe Germany or Switzerland could be, could say, well, could invest in our country, but people still like to invest in the US. Okay, so then let's look at the hard landing option. So page 10, who was reading the hard landing? Okay, so what about the hard landing? Uh, 
there is opinion. Uh, there is op uh, there are opinions that if America does hard landing, mm. all of the world eco world's economy will have serious damage ever than before. So, in order to pre prevent this, U.S. government tried to make policies like tax cut. Okay, so it could cause a crisis. Yeah. Do you understand hard landing? <coughs> sure. Right? You call out the window, you land in a hard way, right? Yeah. So here, do you know Nouriel Roubini? Nouriel Roubini? New York. He's a famous economist, right? So he says that he thinks the current account deficit will grow because of this reason. The US has a lot of external obligations, interest payments is also included in the current account. And he thinks that, he says, a sustained trade deficit could lead to a lot of debt and could lead to a financial crisis, right? But Nouriel Roubini is the most negative economist in the world. You have some economist who is very optimistic, always predicting good news. Some economists always predicting bad news, right? Nouriel Roubini always predicting bad news. So sometimes he's right. For example, before the global financial crisis, he was the one who predicted, right? Because he's always predicting the bad situation. So sometimes he gets it right. Then for years he's been predicting some crisis in China, right? For years, but there was no crisis. The stock market went up a lot. But then this year there was some stock market crash in China. So he was right again. <laughs> right? So you get some economists, they have a good strategy. Just stick to the negative prediction. Eventually, you're going to be right. Right? Or stick to the optimistic prediction. Eventually, you're going to be right. Okay? So he's making this kind of negative prediction. Right? So all your information then? Uh, inevitable <coughs> as future dollar depression could lead to severe inflation and a rapid increase in U.S. long-term interest, interest rates. Okay, so again, if we depreciate the dollar, yeah. this can lead to inflation. Yes. And what other problem? Increase in the interest rates in the U.S. Yes. And what can that cause? What did, we, what did the big increase in interest rates cause in 2007, 2006? House prices go high. You can call it a crash in the house price or the stock market, right? If the interest rate has risen very suddenly. So if we depreciate the dollar or not, that can cause inflation. How does depreciating the dollar cause inflation? If I depreciate the dollar, why does that cause inflation? Okay, so in Russia, I think you guys could understand that, right? The Russian currency was depreciated recently. So what happened to the price of imports? Did you notice anything in your daily life? Sure. What kind of things was getting more expensive? Uh, kind of uh, cell phones, computers, all this, which we import, technological things. Okay, so all of the imports now. getting more expensive, right? Yeah. Russia is a little bit fortunate because you have oil, you don't have to import oil, right? Mm -hmm. But if the US is going to... Well, the price of oil is in dollars, so for the US it's still not as big a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, the goods will all get expensive, so we'll have inflation. Then because of inflation we need to raise the interest rate. Then that can cause a problem for the economy. So, any other points here? In order to avoid the crisis, crisis mm -hmm. U.S. policymakers try to make new policies like tax cut and two phase uh, budget cut. I think. Uh, there was a cry in the crisis in 2007. They made a stimulus, yeah. All right? So tax cuts and <laughs> stimulus. Do you understand the fiscal stimulus? So they made a fiscal stimulus, which means more debt. So we have the fiscal deficit, high fiscal deficit these days in the US, right? So 
more, that's basically more debt, the more payments, more financial obligations for the U.S. Okay. Do you understand stimulus? This means increase the spending and decrease taxes. Okay. So if we, we looked at the last time the fiscal account, government account, we saw that the U.S. spends money on defense, on medical care, on social security, right? So increase the spending on those things and reduce the taxes, what's going to happen? We have a bigger deficit, fiscal deficit. What do we need to do to pay for the fiscal deficit? Lend money. Okay. So because of this, we, we can also get problem in the U.S. economy. They decided to raise the borrowing limit. Yes. To borrow money for reducing this. So they can have, they're always raising the borrowing limit in the U.S., right? Even last month or last week, they again decided to raise the borrowing limit so they can borrow more money. Okay. Because the government is not making a surplus. The government is making deficit these days in the U.S. Okay, anything else here? So, here we can write down US is a kind, we can see it in US is a world financial center. Okay, so then we have the information, so this is the information, okay, so now we need to make an analysis to make our action plan, okay, so we need to analyze the information and make an action plan, this is our action plan, do you understand the action plan? Yes. Action means what do we need to do or what should be done? Do you have any question or comment about the case so far? So now just by yourself you're going to spend the five minutes to discuss with your partner and analyze the information. Okay, so here we have listed the data. Data is evidence, evidence, okay, this is evidence, there is this evidence, and there is this evidence, okay, there, Noriel Rubini has this opinion, okay, other experts have this opinion, so experts have different opinions, okay, so that now we have to do the analysis, which is support one interpretation over another, so which interpretation do you agree with here? Deficit is okay or deficit is not okay. Alright, so analyze the information and then I'm going to ask you to put up your hand. What do you think? US deficit is okay or US deficit is not okay? Okay, do you understand what you have to do? Yes. Okay, so that step, this step is called analysis. So you can write down under the analysis section, what do you think? And you, you should write down some of the evidence that you think is important evidence to support the idea that the deficit is okay or not okay. okay so you can discuss with your partner. And you can ask me if you have any question about something here you didn't understand.
Okay, so does anybody think the deficit is okay? Nobody agrees with these experts or with Alan Greenspan? No? It's okay, I think, in short term. Maybe in several, mm -hmm. five years it may be okay, but in long term. I don't think it's okay over the long term for people to keep lending money to the U.S. to buy things or investing in the U.S. Okay, so uh, why, why do you think that it's not sustainable? Uh, moon to one. Yes, why do you think the deficit is not okay? What evidence supports your argument? Because it is it could cause a crisis. Mm -hmm. Why? How could it cause a crisis? Uh, if the U.S. current account getting the visit. Mm -hmm. um, it can I uh, could be uh, inflation. It caused inflation. What could cause inflation? What what is going to cause inflation? Inflation could be a problem, yes. But why would we have inflation? In the US, why would we have inflation? Why, possibly, why could they have inflation? Import is increased. Hmm? Export is decreased. What would... What did we say on the board would cause inflation in the U.S.? Okay, yeah, so... If we had a weak dollar, right? If they appreciate the dollar. Because traditionally... If the, one way to deal... Any country... One way to deal with a lot of debt is if they owe the debt in their own currency, is to depreciate the currency. It's easier to pay back, right? So traditionally, if I'm a country, and I have currency A, I owe you a lot of currency A, okay? Very easy way for me to pay back my currency A is depreciate my currency, okay? Increase the money supply of currency A in my economy. People's salaries goes up, right? everything goes up, my currency gets a lot weaker. Now it's a lot easier for me to pay back my debt in my currency. But the problem is inflation will be high. So if the US tries to find the easy way out of their debt by using this way, it could cause inflation. Inflation can cause the increase in the interest rate, and then we can have a crisis, okay? So this could be a problem. So, <laughs> what if uh, USA uh, buy their bonds or exchange? Yes, this can also cause inflation. They're increasing the money supply. So, in 2008, the US bought 80% of their own government bonds. Because if the US central bank didn't buy the government bonds, the treasury, there was no demand in the market. So the yield are, would have been very high, and the US interest rate would have been very high. But they wanted a low interest rate, so the central banks stepped in, and they bought a lot of the US government bonds. Now, the US has a special position in the world that it can do that. Other countries can't do that well, because if another country does that, it causes inflation. But uh, for the US, because they are using the reserve currency in the world, the dollar, and for example, oil is priced in dollars, okay? it doesn't cause inflation like it would in other countries. So US has, there, some people have written books about 
the US dollar being the reserve currency. It's called, the phrase for that is called exorbitant privilege. So it's some privilege the US has, basically because they were the country which won the war. In history, any country which wins the war makes the economic system favorable to themselves. So the US, of course, Russia won the war, and the UK and France, but those countries were destroyed by the war. They needed some loans from the US. So they agreed that the US would be, the, and also the US had a very strong economy, right? They agreed that the US could have the reserve currency. So the US has a special situation where they can uh, do QE and not get that much inflation as other countries because they have the world reserve currency. We already saw most of the trade is carried out in dollars. So we saw that China, for example, holds 1.4 trillion dollars. So when the US increases the supply of dollars, it's all around the world people hold dollars, not just in the US. Okay? So it's spread out over all the world. Whereas in Zimbabwe, they increase the money supply. Nobody else holds the Zimbabwe currency. So money is only being increased in Zimbabwe. So you have a stronger effect on the inflation. So sustainable, we said foreigners are holding dollars. So we said China is kind of in a difficult position. If they start selling their dollars, their currency will get stronger, they won't be able to export as much, and on top of that, the savings of dollars will be worth less. Because other people will also start selling the dollar, the demand for dollar is down, supply is up, dollar will get weaker. Okay? So, uh, we had, in the 1980s, we also had a big fiscal deficit, okay? and the US continued to have a current account deficit. We talked about the global financial markets. Uh, we have a global savings glut. Do you understand savings glut? What does glut mean? Glut means a lot. There's a lot. So because the world population is getting bigger, uh, also we have some problem with inequality. So for example, somebody, IT genius, has a lot of money. They have a lot of savings, right? But other people don't have as much. Or professional sports players are getting paid more and more. They have a lot of savings, right? What are the professional sports players going to do with their money? Where are they going to invest their money? A lot of professional sports players go bankrupt five years after they retire because they get very bad investment advice. They invest in their friend's company, right? Friend says, I have an idea. I want to start a helicopter company. Can you give me some money to start a helicopter company? And then Mike Tyson says, okay, here you go. Here's $20 million, start a helicopter company. Then their friend comes back two years later. Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. Helicopter company didn't work out. I bought a lot of helicopters, but nobody uses them. <laughs> then Mike Tyson says, oh, what? No, I can't get any money, I'm bankrupt, oh no! Right? So that's normally what happens with professional sports stars. But they should, the more clever professional sports stars, they will invest their money in US government bonds, right? Or in the S&P 500, across all the stock markets. It's less risk. Okay, so, these days we have a lot of savings. Pensioners, people who are retired. Right, aging population, they have their money, we have a globalized world, so the pensioners can invest their money wherever they want. If they want, they can invest the money in the US. Okay? So we, this is one problem in the world which is causing some bubble, boom and bust around the world. If, if one stock market is doing very well, like China, a lot of people might invest in China. Everybody around the world invests in China, it goes up more, right? And then, starts going badly, everybody starts selling their stocks, goes down more. So, globalization can also cause more boom and bust situation. Okay? But, point is, we have more, people have more and more savings, constantly. Savings is getting higher around the world, so people are looking for places to invest their savings. So, this can also help the US 
uh, situation, but not sustainable. Okay, uh, we said that uh, accounting, the US maybe has too much debt, it has to pay back the interest, can't afford to pay back the interest and the debt, starts to depreciate its currency, we start to get inflation, interest rate is increased, some crisis in the economy again. Okay, could be situation. Uh, in the US, the manufacturing base is disappearing. They're not manufacturing as much as they used to. Okay, so we can see that exports is growing in services, but not so much in goods. The US is financing consumption, not investment. So this is an important point. Uh, for example, in the 1990s, we could say that the US current account deficit was very healthy. Why do you think we could say that was very healthy in the 90s? People were investing a lot of money in the US. Why were they investing in the US in the 90s? We had Microsoft, we had Google, we had Yahoo. Were those con companies productive companies? No. Profitable no. and productive companies in the 90s? No. They weren't? No, but they had just optimistic. No? Microsoft wasn't profitable in the 90s? No. What? When was Microsoft Office invented, or Microsoft Excel, or PowerPoint? Did people only start using those in the 2000s? No, 90s. Hmm? The early 90s, right? You could use Microsoft Office in the early 90s. So you start, Microsoft has a product, Microsoft Office, starts in the US, sold all year around the world. Do you want to invest in Microsoft? It's a growing company, right? So in the US, at that time, people were investing in those kind of companies. Those companies were growing and paying profits. That kind of investment is a very healthy kind of investment. Investing in productive companies, which is very profitable and, and growing. But in the 2000s, it was a different kind of investment, more in the real estate market in the US. So the real estate market is not so much productive investment, especially if you're there is some productive investment where you, you build a new homes, but if you're buying existing home, are you producing anything? No, right? It's not, kind, it's not as healthy investment. Or if you're just lending money to the US and they're just buying things, buying real estate, buying cars with the money, that's not as healthy as you're giving, lending money to the US and they're producing things like Microsoft or another company. Okay, different type of investment. So we could see uh, this kind of problem. So we have to figure out nowadays, is the US financing consumption or investment? Do you think companies like Facebook uh, are very productive companies? No. Or not? No. No. Hmm? No. Is Facebook a very profitable company? Yes. Yeah. Hmm? It's not making much profit now. People invest in Facebook, but it's trying to find a way to make a profit. Mm -hmm. How does Facebook make a profit? Social advertising. Advertising, right? But that mightn't be enough at the moment to meet its its uh, costs. Okay. Well, people think in the future Facebook will find maybe they'll have more advertisements as time goes on. People are already getting annoyed about the advertisements, and you can find the ad block program to block the ads. That's a problem. Another problem for Facebook. So this is a, is a question that, that people have to ask. Is the finance, is the money we're giving to the US, is that productive investment? Financing consumption or productive productivity? There is increasing inequality in the US, and we already mentioned people are diversifying away from the dollar. So then the next, let's take a break for 10 minutes, and then we'll talk about ideas for a solution. How can we solve that? Situation. <laughs>